Before I start this video, I just want to let you know that all of the practice uh, tricks that I talk about in this video can be modified to fit your schedule. And down below in the description, I'm going to put a bunch of resources for you to use that are free and online that you can use to improve your clarinet playing. So definitely check down below in the description for things that I recommend to my students, things that I use myself, and things that will help you. What's up, band geeks? So today I'm coming at you with a quarantine practice routine. Um, this specific routine is designed so that it can be modified. Real quick, just give you like a very basic description of it. So it's a practice session that is broken up into three parts. The first part is warm-up, so things like long tone scales, technique exercises, stuff like etudes, stuff like that. That's going to be the first section. The second session, the second session is going to be the things that require the most amount of your attention. So, um, really tough measures in any of your orchestral or solo pieces that you're working on. Um, things like orchestral excerpt, anything that requires a metronome. That's going to be the bulk of um, of that session. And the third session is going to be kind of like dessert. So the warm-ups are, are breakfast, <laughs> the hard stuff is like a hearty dinner, and the last stuff is, the last session is dessert. I realize I skipped lunch. We could do brunch. The last bit is going to be going over um, music that you're already pretty good at and just sort of like polishing up and fine-tuning. Uh, things like sight reading or perhaps spending time learning a new piece of music. Now, it's in three parts, so I would actually space these out over the course of the day. Usually, if you're in like high school, this is really hard to do because you're in school early or you're at work early for a long period of time. So now that we're all at home, we get to sort of do like my ideal practice time. So in the morning, uh, kind of right after I have breakfast and coffee, um, I do my warm-up. So my long tones, my scales, stuff in my scale book, the Behrman scales are great. Um, I have two technique books. I have the Close and I have the Opperman Daily Studies. I'll link all of this stuff below. And the long tones that I use at the beginning, I just do a chromatic scale. And I'm just going to talk this out because this is something that you can do too. I do a chromatic scale. So I set my metronome to quarter note equals 60. And I do the first four notes of the chromatic scale, four beats each. It works on the air, just like getting the air flowing and like waking up your ears and waking up your embouchure muscles without getting too technical right at first. We're just warming up the air. Um, and while we're doing long tones, we're paying attention to tone, intonation, um, and you can also, uh, to make it interesting, you can also add dynamics. So after I play the first four whole, the, the first four notes of the chromatic scale, I take a four beat break, and then I do the next four notes, and then I take a break, and then I do the next four notes. <laughs> Next thing you're going to do is scales, because again, if you've been practicing your scales, they're not super difficult. Like, still be mindful of all the right notes, but like these are things that you've done before. You warm up the fingers with all of your scales, depending on who you are. It's major, it's minor, it's harmonic minor, you know, you know whatever scales you typically practice. You're going to warm up the fingers. And this gets them moving in like a stepwise motion. There's nothing too hard, nothing too difficult just quite yet. Thank you. 
So that encompasses the warm-up, basically warming up your lungs, your fingers, your mouth muscles, everything that you use to produce the sound. So you're already making some good sounds, you've got, you're like, the body is warmed up. <laughs> Once you've warmed up, it's okay to step away and you can work on some of your classwork, do like an online class, you can go for a run, whatever, whatever you're doing at home, you can do. Watch an opera maybe, I don't know. The second portion is going to be sort of just like the stuff that's going to take the most amount of mental energy. So you're going to want to do any metronome work during this time. And this is probably going to be your longest session. Like, I like to space them out like an hour and 15 minutes each. Um, if you're used to only playing 45 minutes a day, do like 20 minutes at a time because you don't want to destroy the inside of your mouth either, so that's important. Um, so any metronome work that you have to do, just like set a metronome and just shred it out. This is like the wood shedding part. Any music that you're playing in an ensemble that's really difficult, woodshed, 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 woodshed. And then you can, you know, start doing, um, if you wanted to add your etude to this section, you can, but I would suggest leaving it toward the end of the warm up. This is where you're gonna do the majority of your work. And then once you've felt like you've been, um, you know, working hard and that you're nearing sort of the end of your focus period, then take a break. Ideally, this would be in the middle of the day so you can finish up your classwork, do an art project, whatever you've been doing. And then, just to sort of like wrap everything up at the end, go over the pieces that you're already confident in playing. It can be so easy to just practice the parts that you're already really good at, but leave it to the end because we need our brain power for that big chunk in the middle. You want to like polish your solo piece, so that's like adding dynamics, making sure you have good articulation, making sure the phrase is going. And doing full run-throughs of pieces that you're already pretty comfortable with too can also be left to this period just to build endurance. Another thing you can do at the end is start learning a piece that you've wanted to learn. Um, being at home, this is a great time to sort of experiment and I'll give you an example. Um, when I was in college, I at the end of, I believe it was my freshman year, I was like, I want to play the Copeland. I want to play the Copeland Concerto so bad. And my teacher was like, I think you should maybe put it off a little bit, like the, the Copeland, it's really hard. And so I took that as sort of a challenge. So over the summer, I learned the Copeland. I just sat down because I had all this time because it was summer vacation. And back in September, and he's like, all right, I can tell you care. Let's do this. I don't know about you, but I've got concerts that are canceled. I'm not giving any performances. I'm not playing in any rehearsals. There's no real deadline to learn any music right now. So I can bring everything back to the foundation. So working on my long tones, my tone, my endurance, my articulation, things that I can be, you know, always warming up with, I don't always warm up with. So this is a great time to just bring everything back to the foundation of your clarinet playing. You know, maybe you haven't thought about your embouchure in a long time. So maybe spend a few minutes just like focusing on your embouchure, or maybe you haven't done any articulation exercises in a hot minute so you can like just like start bringing back little things that will improve your technique over this time because you have all this time now and it's it's really good to just sort of like go back to where you came from or go, go back to the basics focus on the basics and that will strengthen the rest of your clarinet playing so that being said practice smart take lots of breaks 
You can do this in three sessions, you can do it in two sessions, or you can sit down for a four hour period and just get it all out. But I have found that breaking it up over the course of an entire day is the best way for me to get um, everything done and feel good about it. I know that this video sort of um, glazed over a lot of like what the fundamentals actually are. If you found this video to be helpful and if you want me to go more in depth as to you know more ways that you can practice fundamentals and different ideas of ways to practice, um, maybe you don't have a method book and you want to just work on a couple of things to um, you know practice your dexterity for instance, um, I can definitely give you ideas of exercises that you can do without um, without a book. I did get a request to do a video about playing in chamber music and how to go about playing in a chamber ensemble. Um, so that'll be my next really helpful video among various vlogs and fun videos and me trying to be creative during this time of uncertainty. Anything that you have questions on, please leave below in the comments and anything that you do um, to sort of practice and deal with this like shelter in place quarantine practice situation that we're all in. Anything that you do, share down in the comments below and maybe you can help somebody. Practice every day, practice smart, and go practice. Go practice. <laughs>